Hey everyone, welcome to texturing and using normal maps. Uh, we're going to use this to finish the sword we made in tutorial one and make the background look pretty spiffy um, for the sword. So uh, let's go ahead and start. Uh, we're going to start um, at the part before we join the three items together so that uh, when we texture it, the whole thing doesn't look like just one big texture. Um, so we're going to select the blade first. We're going to click um, the material button up here. And then you're going to click new. Um, you have to add a material before you can add a texture. Um, so once you've added that, let's go ahead and go to texture. Go to new. And there's a couple of different types here, uh, cloud, uh, marble, magic, you can uh, try out a couple of those. Um, but for now we're going to go to uh, image or movie. And uh, we're going to use our own image for the texture. Uh, so uh, go to open and uh, find wherever uh, you've placed uh, your texture. Um, we've got a metal texture here for the sword. Um, your textures, you can either find them in Google Images, so um, so metal texture or uh, you know bronze texture, uh, whatever you're looking for here. Um, so once you find uh, what you want, go uh, save it and uh, bring it into Blender. Um, so when we render that, you're going to see that the uh, blade looks a lot nicer than before. So let's go ahead and uh, work on the uh, hilt here. Same thing here, we're going to um, add the material and uh, add the texture. And we're going to change it to images. Same thing here, just find uh, the texture you want. We've got a nice little blue there, but when we render it, um, it's not going to look very good. Part of it's going to be stretched. So in order to fix that, um, we're going to scroll down and go to uh, mapping. In mapping, you're going to change the projection, and that actually changes uh, how it's displayed on your uh, object. So instead of flat, we're going to do cube. And now when you render it, you get a much better look on it. So that's the handle. Let's save this texture as hilt. Uh, because the reason we're going to do that is because the handle, uh, we're going to use the same texture uh, for it. So we'll add a material there, go to texture and go to new. And instead of changing the type to image and adding a new texture, we're going to use the same texture from the uh, handle. So select this box here and click hilt. Um, the reason why we name it is you're going to have a bunch of other textures here. It'll be easier to find if you name it something specific. So add that, and you've changed the hilt now, or the uh, the handle. So same color as the hilt. Um, I've got this little uh, piece here that um, I'm also going to color um, this right here. I'm just going to use material and not add any uh, texture to it. I just want to change the color to yellow and uh, pretty much leave it at that. So. Um, you can change the intensity if you want. That's the shiny piece on the uh, on the actual object. Um, so it's up to you. you. You can just manipulate that. The hardness here will change uh, how big that uh, shiny piece is. So anyway, so you've got your uh, sword there. Let's go ahead and uh, join all three pieces uh, so that when we Im import it into our background, where I'm going to show you how to use some normal mapping. Um, It'll all be it'll be easier to find and easier to import into uh, the background. So when you join it, it'll go back to uh, the original size uh, that it was. But we can just fix that there. Scale it down some, and yeah. So there's your sword right there. So let's uh, get to the next part for a uh, normal mapping. Oh, and uh, before uh, we continue, make sure you uh, save your uh, sword as well. Um, otherwise, uh, <laughs> it, you're not going to be able to find it that easily. So let's go on to the next part here. Um, I've already got a uh, little background image that I've created. Um, 
you know, just making some simple shapes, putting them together. It's stuff that uh, you can easily do, especially if you watch my first tutorial where you learn how to extrude and scale things. So um, let's go ahead and uh, first of all apply textures to the floor and to the uh, the steps around the uh, pedestal area. So um, add a new object. Uh, I'm gonna add some uh, texture here as well. I've used a, a tile texture and uh, once you've added this in, uh, when you render it you're gonna see that the uh, actual uh, tiles are kinda big so uh, the way we can change that is by going down here and um, on the right side and go down to uh, image mapping uh, the extension will already be repeat that's just how the uh, how the uh, projection will lay out so um, you can change it to clip or to a uh, clip cube, but we're going to leave it on um, on repeat. And uh, we're going to change the X and Y values to 5. And once you change that to 5 when you render it, it looks a lot better. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and change the texture f uh, for the area above the floor. Um, I've already uh, gotten all these items and uh, made a parent. This is the parent for the uh, steps and the uh, other piece below it. Um, so once I change that right there, it's actually going to change uh, all of them. So um, let's go ahead and add a texture there as well. Oops, wrong texture. <laughs> if you accidentally put a wrong texture in, you can simply click uh, this icon right here and uh, it'll take you back to where you were. Let's select marble here and uh, render the image and there you go. Looks pretty nice. Now I'm gonna show you uh, normal mapping and what normal mapping is is making a surface look bumpy um, using a particular image. So you can find normal maps again on Google Images. Just type in normal map and there you go. You got a bunch of different uh, textures there. Um, so we're going to go with a, a brick type texture. So go ahead and click on your uh, wall in the background or whatever you've made. And you can click material, add the material. It's going to be just like adding texture in. It's, it, it is a texture basically. Um, and you go to image as well and open the, uh, the actual brick piece or the normal map that you've saved. Um, and there you go. So you've got that uh, when you render it. You've got uh, this bumpy looking surface, but we need to change the colors and manipulate the, uh, the size of it a little bit. So let's scroll down to a uh, repeat. We'll change uh, the repeat pattern here. Uh, we'll change X to three and we'll change Y to five, I suppose. Um, also, th so the uh, right wall isn't stretching um, or doesn't stretch, we'll go to mapping and we'll change that projection again like we did earlier for the sword and change it to cube. Alright, and before we render it one more time, let's click down here on RGB to intensity. This uh, will let us manipulate the color of it so you won't get that funky rainbow looking color. Um, make it white and maybe darken it a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and render the image. And there you go. You got a bumpy brick wall in the background. So a lot of video games use this technique uh, to do some of their uh, modeling. So it's pretty nifty. So now we're going to want to add the sword in. Um, so we're going to go to a file, append. And um, you're going to find your uh, Blender file where you were working on the sword. So here it is, Master Sword. So we'll click that, go to the Object folder, and then uh, click on Master Sword. All right, and there we go. So uh, now we want to use the uh, other views that I have open here to kind of line it up with the little uh, pedal so it's going to sit in.
All right. Maybe scale it down some so it's not too big. All right, and there we go. So now when we render the image here, we've got a complete setting here. We've got the sword and the uh, and the brick wall and everything. All right, and that pretty much uh, sums it up. Can add a uh, finish touch here and uh, add some lighting effect later on if you'd like to get a little creative. And uh, there you go, you've created a sword, the background, use normal mapping and texture mapping to uh, make it look really nice.